greetings. One of the most prominent subjects of futurism that gets the most attention is the technological progress of computer graphics and the purest manifestation of computer graphics are video games, even more so than CGI in films because video games are interactive and have to be played by a large number of people in a more immersive way than a film. And for that reason, we go back to an article series that I started way back on The Futurist in 2006. So the first time I wrote this article was in 2006. I updated it to a second version in 2016. And it took snapshots of prominent video games at 10-year intervals to judge the progress of graphics over that 10-year snapshot. Because the thing about exponential progress, and this applies to graphics as well, is that the change over one year seems very little, but it's compounding. And therefore, the change over larger periods of time, such as 10 years, becomes more distinct. At the same time, there is the aspect of saturation of graphics, and we'll talk about that. So this is the article, and these are 10-year snapshots of games. In 1976, there was a game called Pong that everyone is familiar with. It was one of the very first video games that was widely played. But it had nothing in terms of what games of today would consider immersive. There was very little in the way of artistry, no music, no complexity of emotion, anything like that. It was just a hand-eye coordination reflex game that gives you a slow drip of dopamine if you're playing this against someone else. So very limited in terms of immersion and entertainment. How long can you truly play Pong? Then 10 years later, 1986, you had games like this. Suddenly of color and some extent of three-dimensional depth. Now, this is still very primitive, but it's a huge improvement over 10 years prior, 1976. Go another 10 years, and you get to 1996. This is one of the Tomb Raider games, and you are beginning to have more texture in the backgrounds, as well as humans that begin to look a little bit like humans. So this was a jump from 1986 to 1996. And then this is the jump from 1996 to 2006. And at the time, I actually found this to be very impressive, but then the eye also adjusts and the expectations of the viewer improve. So when I first saw this, I found these graphics to look very realistic for a 2006 video game. By today's standards, however, this does not look all that impressive. And this was 2006. But now we're starting to see a saturation in the delta of improvement. There's still distinct improvement, but the magnitude of each jump does not seem to be as high. And we will measure that to see if that perception is true or not. And then for 2016, I included this YouTube video into my updated article that listed a lot of different games of 2016. So we'll look at this video for a little bit. Okay, that is some 2016 era graphics. Now, of course, I have stopped blogging at The Futurist, and I have superseded that activity with this YouTube channel, so now we make a video like this one. So where are we in terms of the progress of video game graphics at the end of 2022, going into 2023? Well, the story is complicated, but converges to many other themes on this YouTube channel. So let's go to the progress of computation itself to give us an idea of where we are going and whether we are where we should be. Now, long-time viewers of this channel are very familiar with this chart of mine, and forget about this missing economic prosperity bit for the time being. This is supercomputing power over time, and all computational gains are downstream from this, whether it's a video game console or PC power for PC games. Supercomputing is the purest manifestation of computing power, but it tracks the general percolation of computing power gains throughout consumer products as well. And we were on this steady exponential trend all the way up to 2013, after which things began to flatline. And the flatlining of video game graphics improvements also seems to have happened since that time. Because if you look at video games of today, their improvement relative to 2013, so almost 10 years ago, is a lot less than what we saw from 1976 to 86, and then 86 to 96, and even 96 to 2006. And this is the missing delta. We should be easily 10x to 30x greater in computational power than we currently are. 
And just to revert back to this trend line, we would need a 100x gain in three years or more realistically, a 1,000x gain in about seven years just to revert back to this trend line. And I believe we will revert back to this trend line because this is one of the first principles of technology and economics. Because if we don't revert back to this trend line and we're just saturating, then humanity's technological progress is going to saturate. We will not have a technological singularity and we are effectively done. And the Fermi paradox is explained. I don't think that is going to be the case. I do think we will revert back to this trend line or an equivalent computational measurement. Maybe teraflops is not the best measurement. We might have some quantum computing oriented measurement. But this is why computing power improves video game graphics. And remember that video games are about numbers of polygons per image, and you need a square of computational power to improve polygon density, as I'm going to demonstrate right now. Take these matrices, for example. Now to get twice as many polygons per linear dimension, you need four times as many polygons total, the square of it. To get three times as many polygons per linear dimension, you need nine times as many. And to get four times as many polygons in a linear dimension, you need 16 times as many polygons in total. Therefore, computational power has to rise by four times for graphical quality to double. Computational power has to rise by 100x for graphical quality to be 10x better. And that's fine because we're talking about factors of millions over many decades. But that is why the improvement in video game graphics rises as a square root of the improvement of computational power. By the way, this is also why telescope power also increases as a square root of computational power growth. And you can see about that in this video up here in this card because anyone interested in video game graphics improvement should also be interested in telescope power improvement because the two are derived from exactly the same source, which is computational power gains, which is the essence of almost all types of futurism that we talk about. So this is the scale of how an image in a video game gets higher resolution and the opportunity for more realistic textures and colors and lighting and things like that, the square root of computational power.